Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and following up on a video a few weeks ago revealing the hidden way your job keeps you broke, which was an instant success. Millions of... Okay, so it bombed. But the fact remains, there are things in your life keeping you eating ramen noodles instead of filet mignon. And the biggest hurdle keeping you from your financial goals, that number one obstacle keeping you broke, is your own family. Those lovable roommates that just won't leave. But it is not in the way that most people think. This isn't about the shopping, the braces, or that $6,000 you dropped at Disney just to wait in line for 18 hours. No, this is something that nobody talks about, but will help you and your family get back on that path to reaching your goals. In this video, I'll reveal the three ways your family keeps you broke and how to fix each. Stick around and towards the end of the video, I'll show you a simple checklist to save more money and get back on track. We're getting started, but you know I've gotta send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Nation, nearly three in four couples report arguing regularly about money, more than any other topic, and it's the leading cause of divorce. Those arguments revolve around everything from spending to saving and hiding money. And if you didn't read that next line in the survey, 60% of couples say they check their bank account more often than they have sex, which is the real tragedy here. But before we get to those three ways your family keeps you broke and how to fix it, I wanna get your input on this. How often do you argue about money with your spouse or your friends even? Scroll down and let me know in the comments below how often do you argue about money and do you feel like it's something that's hurting that relationship? And this first one is the big one, the number one way your family keeps you broke and it's because you have no shared financial goals. This is the big one, Nation. If you get one thing from this video, please talk to your family about their goals, your goals, and find those financial goals that you can share because not having them is gonna leave you broke. Just think about it. If the rest of your family does not share your money goals, why would they have any motivation to save or invest? They're not gonna see the point of saving. Worse yet though, is the breakdown in your family that this will cause. You're gonna feel like you're the only one that cares about saving or investing for those goals. When you see everyone else spending, you're gonna get frustrated, angry, and it's gonna to lead to an argument. And even if the rest of your family isn't spending you out of those goals, it's still not gonna be the support you need when budgeting gets tough. Life is what happens when you're making other plans, and it's gonna to get tough saving and investing the money you need. When that happens, you need the rest of your family united around those shared goals if you're gonna make it through. I'll show you how to fix each of these later, but the second problem here is not understanding how personal finance works. A study at Ohio State of more than 6,000 households found in more than one in three families, one spouse knew little or nothing about the family's personal finances and kids are learning nothing in school about how money works. And that could mean that just one person in the family even understands debt or how interest works and investing, and that's gonna create problems. For example, I found out a few months ago that the wife had opened up a store credit card at a local grocer. Now, no big deal, we each have a few separate cards, but the problem was she had carried a charge over $1,000 on it for three months, paying over 24% annualized interest. Now she wanted to pay it off, but couldn't do it immediately in that first month, so decided to pay the interest instead. We could have easily paid it off and saved almost $100 interest, but she just didn't understand how much the interest was really gonna cost. Last problem here, and I'll show you how to fix all three of these, but it's just that keeping up with the Joneses mentality. Now, I am blessed that my wife is just as much a cheap ass as I am, but not everyone is so lucky. A survey by OnePoll found Americans spend an average of $1,500 a month on non-essential spending. From over $200 a month just eating out to impulse shopping and takeout. And remember, this is per person, so multiplied for a family. And this doesn't even include the big stuff we buy. Not because we need it, but just so we can show that we have the money. The things like the cars and the bigger houses that can easily cost into the tens of thousands of dollars extra. And the joke is, we're all broke. The Joneses and their neighbors all broke just trying to keep up. I'll show you how to fix each of these problems next, but first, I wanna personally invite you to get the Weekly Bowtie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news, trends, and strategies you need to know. It's absolutely free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community, so look for the sign-up link in the video description below. These three problems, the biggest factors in your family keeping you broke are surprisingly easy to solve and will actually help bring you closer together. For example, solving the problems of that shared goals means creating those goals together. And this starts as simply as sitting down and talking about what you wanna do with your money. What are those big goals like retirement, 
buying a house, and even vacations you've always wanted to take. But then it goes beyond this. Really talk about those goals and create that mental picture around each. What's the perfect house or the vacation you're saving from? And then get detailed here, down to what color you want to paint the walls of that house and imagining the family in the backyard. And this works on so many levels. First, just that detail into the goal is going to help you understand exactly how much you need to reach it, how much you need to save. It takes away the uncertainty to give you the confidence you can get there. Also though, that mental picture is going to help motivate everyone, especially when the budgeting gets tough. It becomes a whole lot easier to sacrifice spending on those little things if, if you know you're going to be rewarded by the big things. More importantly though, it brings everyone together in those shared goals. Instead of just one person feeling like they're the only ones that care, the only ones sacrificing and saving, it's the entire family working together. Next here, get your family interested in, in learning the basics of personal finance. Now all you out there in the nation know we love talking investing and about money on the channel. Not everyone nerds out on this stuff, and that's okay, but having everyone know at least the basics of debt, saving, and the power of investing, that's going to go a long way to fixing your money problems. Just understanding how interest works can help keep your family from racking up thousands of dollars in credit card debt. Understanding how investing gives you that financial freedom by making money on your money can help motivate everyone to save a little bit more. We've got some great videos on basic personal finance that I'll link in the video description below. Everything from the power of compounding to credit and investing, so check that out. One more here and I'll reveal that quick start checklist. And here we need to overcome that Joneses mentality. And this one can be tough because it's really the value so many of us hold that our worth, the measure of success is, is the things that we own. We want the nicest houses in the neighborhood, the most expensive car, and the best clothes. Nation, we all like nice things, but understand the real difference between that Tesla Model 3 and the Malibu is only in your ego and about $20,000. And of course, the real kick in the nuts in all of this, the Joneses are just as broke as everyone else. The neighbors that you think are doing so much better that just spent 30 grand on the bathroom reno complete with a golden shitter, they're up to their eyeballs in debt and fighting constantly about money. Now I know these three fixes are a little vague, so I want to start you out with an easy checklist. Five steps to start right now for creating that family financial plan. And first here is just to start that conversation around your goals. This means talking about retirement, kids' education, buying a house, vacations, everything. Do not assume that everyone has the same plans or priorities here. In fact, when my wife and I sat down to do this, I was blown away that she prioritized college costs over his and her jet skis. So talk through those goals, figure out which are the most important and have at least one goal that you can reach within the next 18 months. Something you can save up for and do as a family reward within the next year or two. Next, with that list of goals, which are compatible for everyone. Now, this doesn't have to mean that everyone saves for every goal. I have a few family goals that motivate everyone, but it's okay to have your own projects as well. The idea here is just to get the entire family around a shared family plan. Get everyone behind at least one or, or two goals. And with those shared goals, you can get a sense for how much you need to save. For things like retirement, where it's a long-term expense, you can multiply how much you'll need each year by 25 for that goal. On the other hand, for those big lump sum goals like college and vacations, it's easier because you'll know exactly how much you want to spend. Fourth, and this is really where we start to see that big transformation in the family finances. Talk about how much you have saved and how much the family is saving each month. This is the wake up call that most families need to see how that current spending and saving just does not align with those goals and, and what has to be done. And now using this process of first talking about those shared goals, then looking at the spending and saving, it's amazing how well this works to tackle those money issues. Because here, instead of arguing about who's spending what, here you start with that shared goal and it becomes Okay, what do we need to do to get there? Now, there are still going to be hurdles along the way, so you need to evaluate your plan and savings every three or six months. Nation, do not expect this to be all rainbows and unicorns, with everyone spending less immediately. Resist the urge to turn it into a blame game, though. It's not about who's saving and who isn't. It's about revisiting those shared goals and reaching them together. Check out those videos on personal finance in the description below, or click on the video to the right to see how your job is keeping you broke. It really was a great video, I promise. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.